Okay, guys. I'm upstairs in my house right now. I'm on the Fujifilm XS10. We're at F2. There goes. I'm on F14 on this. This is my uh, 23 millimeter lens, equivalent of a 35 millimeter lens on a full frame. As we know, Fujifilm's a prop sensor. I just wanted to see uh, how is this to vlog with? Is it too tight? The 18 millimeter is a little bit tight. I have this again on the Nebula tripod, so I give myself some reach. It makes the camera a bit heavier, but if you guys want to know, get an idea what it looks like. I use that mirror. That's the tripod right there. But I think the focus is a bit smoother. Look how close we get. Look how, look at that background. Like if I'm vlogging like this, these camera conspiracies would say everything is tunny. Oh, the tunny. Look at it. Drink it in, my friend. It's tunny. This ain't bad. I'm going down the stairs now. All right, Chan. What are we doing now? Oh, this gets heavy because I'm holding it like this now. Cooking our spaghettis, and then we gotta go to the market. Mm hmm. So we need to buy spaghetti. Mm. So I think this focal length is a little bit tight, but I think it's kind of doable. This is kind of a bit of a out there. Let's go outside. I think my kids are outside. Oh, there's my kitties. How's the. How's the swing set, guys? It's cool. I love it, man. You guys are enjoying the swing set? Yes, we finally have our own swing set. We're half at the end of the year. Let's, let's do an autofocus test. Smiley, you'll be the subject right now. Cool. It's tracking you pretty good as you go back and forth. Should I, should, I, should I try flying all the way around? Oh, it lost you. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> oh, it's to Madison. <laughs> autofocus? I mean, the eye's staying on you. It looks like, oh, it's losing you a little bit, but it mostly, it, it gets you back fast. Is your new camera, I'm guessing? Yes, this is the new camera, but it has my, uh, one of my older lenses on there, but it's one of my favorite lenses. Oh. Yeah. No, I can't see anymore. How is the stabilization doing? On a tighter uh, frame, normally stabilization gets worse. The wider the lens, the more easy it is to stabilize. If I could hold it in here, it's a little bit easier to hold, but that is super close. But this is the funness of the lens, the 20. It's good content. This, just this. A lot goes unsaid in the unspoken world. The 20. That sounds so weird. What sounds weird? So we were talking oh. about, <laughs> I'm trying to record you. Oh, we, we had to say like uh, one Spider-Man one, and then Spider-Man. Oh, spoiler, Spider spoiler, spoilers! Oh no, spoiler! You should cut that out. Cut that out. Never mind. Cut that out. I just realized what you were. I don't spoiler know. alert! They was talking about I, the Spider-Man movie. Spoiler, spoilers! Oh. I know you're posting it. <laughs> it's going on YouTube, oh. but you know what? If you guys didn't know, yes, spoil. If if you guys oh, didn't know. Spoiler. You should know. You shouldn't wait that long to go see the Spider-Man movie. If you're a Spider-Man fan, you would have seen it already. So go, go, give your spoilers. Say what Peter, you guys said. So Peter Parker, yeah, he does. True fact. Fact or cap. And MJ. And yeah, you have to watch the movie to find out if it's fact or cap. We don't make the rules, sorry. Yeah. Look at them in the background. They disappeared. No, no, don't focus on, focus on me, focus on me. There, Tony. Everything is Tony. The Tony. The total average gamer. What's going on, everybody? Total average gamer here, back with another video. <laughs> you know what I want to do? I, I need to make an intro for my YouTubes. I gotta, I gotta start doing that. I gotta develop my own intro. I don't know how. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll use some intros. Maybe I'll make some intros. I don't know. Figure it out. But yeah, just wanted to make a video, and I'm probably gonna take some pictures. Uh, but I don't know if I'm gonna post them. We'll see. This was the lens I was using earlier, and uh, this is uh, the 23 millimeter. Come on, stay with me, Fuji. <laughs> it's a 23 millimeter f1.4 aperture, 
That's goes from um, F14 all the way to, uh, I believe, F16. Then you could set it to the auto setting. I leave it on that. We also have the clutch. This is the original. They remade this lens. I do not have the new one. I have the older one. But this lens, oh man, this is an awesome lens. It's a little bit tight for vlogging. Just a, a little bit too tight for vlogging. But I, I think, I think it's uh, cool enough. But I think I'm gonna stick with probably this lens. The lens we're shooting on is the 18 millimeter f2 right now, and uh, not a lot of people like the lens. And uh, I could understand for video purposes, this is not you know the lens you want to use. Uh, one of the best lenses for video is on my XT2 right now. Uh, is the excuse the dirt on this lens? It's the 18 to 55. Uh, f2 8 to f4 it's not a constant aperture but this is uh it is one of my favorite lenses i love because it's a zoom lens that means you know i i don't zoom with my feet i just you know i just zoom i have 18 on the wide end which is full frame equivalence of uh 27 roughly 27 millimeter up to 55 which is i think like a 84 again roughly uh so you have a good zoom range, almost a standard zoom range, which is normally a 24 to 70. As you were seeing in my video earlier, I was just testing out that lens for the fun of it, see how it is for vlogging. And now this is uh, sort of the, the studio setup. This is going to be me for any time I just want to talk to you guys. I have my good quality mic. I have some decent quality video and where, you know, we, we have a decent out of focus area. Right there is my lava lamp, and uh, I just turned it on so you, you really can't see the lava, but it is on. <laughs> I also have right there behind me a couch and uh, a picture frame. Before, I didn't have that picture frame, and it kind of dresses up the room. This is not um, in my living room. This is the upstairs. It's one room, and it's my room. It's my special man cave. I got all my study uh, Bibles, my books there. I even have some over here. And, uh, this is also where I do my podcast on, on Instagram with Pastor George. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, wanted to make this video. I also, I tested the autofocus for video with, uh, with the 23 millimeter. And, uh, this is sort of what that looked like. Oh, All right. It's this is on the swing set and the kids are swinging. Let's do an autofocus test. Let's see how autofocus. Oh, it already lost. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start from here. Autofocus test. I'm gonna walk up to the camera. Was it good? It's kind of. I mean, this ain't a really good autofocus and lens for video. For for photography, for taking pictures, it's good. But for video, it's kind of. I mean, I think it's acceptable for the way I want to use it. Like if you was to use it for a professional video, I wouldn't rely on the autofocus because it can miss. But the eye is on me right now. I think it's still on me. Right now I can't see I'm too far away from the lens, but it never left. Wow, that's nice. My daughter is gonna help me. Are you, they swing, they hit into each other. All right, Miley, stay here. All right, so look at I the screen, just look at the screen. You see the eye? Yeah. You see the box on my eye? Uh -huh. Tell me if it goes away as I back up slowly. Okay. Still there? I'm going more. Keep going. Let me know when it disappears. It's still there, the square. It's still there? Yeah! Is it still there? Yeah. Say when it leaves. Okay. Are you sure it's still there? Yeah, I still see it. Are you sure? Yeah. Wait, it just stopped focusing. Alright. So, I'm going to walk toward the camera. Let me know. Say it out loud so the camera could hear you when it sees me. Like when right. it sees my eye again. Oh, yeah, they could see you again. All right, let's see if it holds me all the way through. I think that. All right, so now we got to do some wild autofocus. Ready? Yeah. Oh. Took a second. Where am 
want? Hey, you're missing in the video, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I was I'm used to Panasonic G eighty five autofocus, which is horrible. If you want autofocus, do not get that camera. Best though from what I've heard. Oof, that got me tired. The best from what I've heard is Sony and Canon. I've never had them. All I've had is Fuji and Panasonic. So Fuji's definitely got good autofocus. I think it's good enough. It finds me. So for video, autofocus ain't too bad. I also tested the autofocus um, for the, the pictures. Uh, but before we get to the pictures, uh, I just want to say that I th the video wasn't too, too bad for this lens. I want to do it with this lens, but it's already late. And I had to go to market. I had to do a lot of uh, errands. And um, I'm probably actually going to continue. I might continue this, this uh, vlogging experience because... Uh, she wants to go for a tan. There is a an occasion, a wedding coming up that we are planning to attend. And uh, as the situation is, she wants to go get a tan. And so I might uh, do some light night vlogging again. And uh, I don't know if we're going to go with this. I think we're just going to stick with the 18. I think it's a bit more stable footage. Uh, and also, I think I think it looks good enough. It's it's wide enough. I, I I would prefer there are two lenses that I am looking to purchase. Uh, I am looking at uh, the the new Sam Yang slash Rokinon because they are two different companies, but they both somehow make the same lens. It's a 12 millimeter lens, f2 aperture. They make it both for the Sony E mount and Fuji film. And it's a 12 millimeter, which is an 18 millimeter equivalent on full frame. So that's really, really wide. And F2 is fairly bright. It's it's like, uh, like it, I wouldn't say it have the same type of blur. And, and the reason why the wider you go, the the more you lose that effect. Uh, but I mean, you probably still should have some separation at F2. Um, but then there's another lens. But this lens is huge. It, it's bigger and heavier than this lens. And... Um, it is the Viltrox, and I have two Viltrox lenses. Uh, it is the Viltrox 13 millimeter f1.4, and I love because it's an f1.4. I mean, uh, if you guys don't understand, you guys think 1.42. If you guys don't know, f1.4 and f2 is the difference of one stop of light. You're doubling the light that is coming in and hitting the sensor. So that is important for low light situations, and it is also important to give you more pleasing background blur for photography as well as for video. Viltrox is also uh, known for making good good lenses, at least for video's sake. And so that's the reason why I'm actually interested in those lenses, but I think they would be good for um, photography as well. I like, I like the idea of having wide angle lenses. That 13 millimeter lens uh, is an equivalent to about a 20 millimeter, like 19 and a half. It's kind of kind of weird placement. But either way, those are two lenses. I would like to try to get my hands on one. I believe the Samyang Rokinon is about 500 for the Fuji, but it's only 399 for the Sony. I don't know why. Why does Fuji have to be expensive no matter what? It doesn't make any sense. I get it. Their glass is quality glass. I totally understand that. And that's awesome, right? Because their glass is quality. And the lenses I have by Fuji, I, I love. But man, if I'm buying third party, why is third party glass one cost for one mount and a different cost for another? But whatever the case, it's fine. It's 500 versus the 400 or 399 to the 499 from Sony to Fuji. And now the Viltrox also is coming out for Sony and Fuji. And it was supposed to be 429, but now I'm hearing it's going to be 469. Either way, though. It's a cheaper lens. It's not as wide, but it is a stop brighter. And if it uh, has relatively, roughly, the sharpness that lens has, which I think all lenses, especially modern lenses today, should have good enough sharpness, um, it, I think it's a better, a better lens other than 
the the weight that it would carry. I guess uh, here's those pictures that I said. Uh, looks like it missed a lot of shots. No, I did not count, uh, but I'm going to give them to you. You're looking at them. And, um, you know, hit and miss. I did the eight frames per second first. I went from my big daughter, Miley, to my little daughter, Madison. And then uh, I, I did it again with the five frame bursts and um, the buffer. Buffer is bad on this, but I mean, this isn't really made to be a professional camera. This is an entry level camera. It is not made for the professional. It is made for me. And um, that's why, you know, one of the things that I hate about, I don't really care about having that, um, you know, that shooting, you know, eight frames per second and five frames, 10 frames, 30, because you can, you can with the electric shutter, electronic shutter, you can do 30 frames per second in photography with this, which is crazy. But the thing is, you get like maybe one second out of it because the buffer can't handle it because it only could take um, SD card, uh, the UH. S1, UH1, or something like that. Basically, I'll show you right now. It could only take a standard, all right? Take a standard SD card and not one that looks like that. See that? So now, the Fujifilm X-T2 does take that, and it takes it in both slots. So... I'm looking in the wrong place, Craig. I mean, I'm getting used to the XS10. But on a professional camera, you get two card slots. And on this one, you get one card slot on the XS10, and it's where the battery is. Uh, a lot of people don't like it. I don't mind it. I just wish it was two card slots. It's nice to have that redundant recording um, just to be safe. And it also help you know elevate this camera to be something professional because it has uh, the XT4 sensor. It's the same sensor. It's the I think it's called the X Trans4 sensor. And I mean, I, the quality that comes out of this sensor is the quality that comes out of their their best sensors. And if it would have two SD cards, I mean this this would be a very very well to do professional camera. And you can still use this for professional work. It's just a bit scary because if the card fails or anything like that, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, but in either case, I digress. Getting to the point, that's uh, the autofocus for this camera. I think it's decent. I, I'm coming from having a camera. I'll bring it for you guys. I'm back. So this is the camera that I, I was shooting on before. This is a Lumix G85. And uh, it's awesome about this camera because this camera also has a flip screen, as you guys can see. And uh, the IBIS in this camera is amazing. The problem with this camera is the autofocus. You see how this camera holds me? This camera can do that. If I go back and forth, it follows me. I see the eye, uh, the box around my face, the box on my eye. It's tracking me and it's tracking me well. This shows me that it's tracking me. Oh, it just lost me. Hello. <laughs> this camera shows me it's tracking me, but in reality, it's not. And um, one of the reasons um, it does that is because it doesn't use phase detect autofocus. It uses uh, contrast detect autofocus. And contrast detect is, is good. It's it for single focus, uh, single, I don't know, this, this continuous autofocus and then single autofocus. If it's in continuous, like what the camera is in right now, to, to hold on to me and follow me, you need phase detect. And for the, the you know, the single, uh, which just, you know, it locks on and it, and, and it just stays there. And if anything moves out of frame, then it's going to be out of focus. So contrast is good for snapping a, a picture. It works well for pictures. I've used it a lot for pictures. It doesn't work too well for video. So I kind of took the fun out of it. Uh, then I ended up getting the X-T2 and I loved the X-T2. Uh, the video out of this camera, I love it. I love the pictures, the colors that come out of this camera. I bought all my lenses for this camera, but the only lens that was really functional with this camera for video was this one. Unless I was doing, um, you know, something like a, a studio style 
with this, um, with this lens, it has OIS. And uh, OIS is op optical image stabilization. Uh, IBIS is internal or inside body internal stabilization. I don't know, the, the stabilization is on the inside. The whole sensor shakes, right? <laughs> this, the glass shakes. And it, when, when things get too shaky, it compensates. I don't know exactly how it works, but it fixes it. And it used to do uh, an okay job, but compared to IBIS, I mean, for video's sake, uh, this is so much better. But this is still nice to have. Uh, but from what I've seen, people people keep using this lens um, for uh, for video with the XS10, and I get it for the autofocus. I totally understand. It. There's no better autofocus lens for video. But when you're walking and vlogging with the camera. That's a bad lens because you have the OIS and you have the IBIS, which normally uh, a company like Panasonic does well. You get the, the dual stabilization and it works out well. Um, but for a Fuji, Fuji doesn't know how to do that. They, they, they claim dual stabilization, but the stabilization bites each other and uh, they don't get along very well. So I would recommend that if you do any type of vlogging scenario, uh, you would do something either like this or uh, use, use a different lens. This lens is obviously a very tight focal length to use. I would use the 18 millimeter F2, or if you can afford it, this, there is a 16 millimeter F1.4. That lens is amazing, but I believe brand new, it's about $1,000. I'm not buying that, <laughs> not anytime soon anyway. Uh, that's about a 24 millimeter uh, focal length F2. Um, you know, as, as we do the equivalents. I mean, that's a pretty decent, it, 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 you're gonna have the kind of separation we have now, but on a much wider scale. So that's, I think that would be awesome. Uh, and then that's why, again, why I wanted the 12 or the 13 millimeter lenses that are coming out right now. I just, I'm waiting for them. And I hope I can get my hands on them because there is a chip shortage, as some of you guys might be aware of. And uh, all cameras and their lenses are just failing to, to be on time when you need it. And all stores sell out super quick. And the only way you can buy it is if you're buying it kind of secondhand. But really, it's like scalpers that are just raising the price because they know you can't get your hands on it. I will say that was all. I hope you enjoyed the content. Give us a little like, a little subscribe. A little comment. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. God bless for now, and uh, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.